<laughs> Very well. This is Steve from Boxing UK. Delighted to be joined by Johnny Nelson. And daughter, perhaps. <laughs> it's fish and chips. It's fish and chip night tonight, so I'm not doing bad. Good man, happy days. Day? No. <laughs> right, you can have it if you want. It's my daughter just trying to text me. Uh, how are you? You all right? I'm all right, Johnny. Yes, it's a couple of weeks since we've spoken, so thanks for your time. Yeah. Uh, get straight in there with AJ Pulev. It's, it was a year since we saw AJ last time out. Yeah. Any similarities or differences that you saw at the weekend, Johnny? Uh, I see uh, an AJ that's got a different mindset to what he had before. I think, uh, I think the harsh criticism that he got has made him hardened and thick-skinned in, uh, uh, in regards to trying to please everybody. So now the important people he wants to please is himself and his team. And you could see um, he wasn't going to be pressured. His time wasn't going to be managed. He was going to manage his time, uh, how he was going to do it. And these are just building blocks. He was just trying to implement what he's doing in the gym, in the ring. Can we talk about the third round? Yeah. He's, get, he's getting some criticism for not getting him out of there, which is always easier he? said than done. But yeah, he, he can't win, can he? Uh, Paul yeah. was, is, 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 was a tough guy, a tough, tough opponent. And... Um, and, uh, and AJ got him with some solid shots and this guy just refused to go down no matter what. So you tell me, anybody that's hit like it's not AJ's fault, the man's got a, a, a chin like steel. Kept coming back. So that, when he got caught with that shot, that flurry in the third, most fighters, midway through a fight, their energy levels will dip probably after round four. And uh, 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 that's on the way to getting the second win. The second win takes them through to the end of the fight. If you do a number, a, a, a burst, thinking you're going to get someone out, it's going to take you to that dip quicker. So that took AJ to the dip in the third round, took a lot of energy out of him before he could get his second win back. Took him two rounds to get it back. So when that's, by the time he got to his six, his second win didn't come. But um, uh, but Poole left second win was just coming back through again because Poole left. Again, he got past four rounds, five rounds. His second win's coming. He's, he's, he's riding the storm. Um, so Anthony Joshua then, once he steadied him up and got through, through that point, he turned the pressure on. I think he did a great job. Um, you can see it's a work in progress. He's turned into a box fighter, and, um, and that's what he wants to do. It's all in preparation for, obviously, the, <clears throat> the Fury fight. Do you think the referee should have stopped with Johnny? Because Pulev turned his back, didn't he? Could it, him. Could it, him. Turned his back. Could it, him. But, uh, good referee, um, he gave him the benefit of the doubt. Um, Paul have turned it back because he did something that was instinctive. He still wanted to fight on once he turned back around again, but he was, he was, like, he was like a man possessed. Uh, he thought, no matter what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and win this. So he put up a great, an excellent show. So you can't knock him. And the finish was ruthless, wasn't it? Mm, excellent. Um, I think once AJ got the measure of him, how he finishes, he finishes well. Um, and uh, it caught him on the end of the shot. And Paul left, you know, the, it, it wasn't about how hard you hit him, it's about how quick you hit him, how, how the time landed, him seeing the shot coming. So um, I think AJ did a, a spot on job. Everyone's talking about AJ Fury, Johnny, and I've heard a couple of questions that you've answered on it, but can we ask, for, does it actually happen? Because there's, just seems to be an awful lot of egos, uh, awful lot of obstacles in the way. How difficult is it going to be? Uh, listen, it, is, it, is, it is possible. Bigger fights, well, big fights have been made in the past. Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson, uh, Tyson uh, uh, Holyfield. You know, when these guys have had different promoters, different TV companies, these have worked together. This can be done. Uh, show business, unfortunately. Business gets in way of the show. I know Tyson wants it, and I know Joshua wants it regardless of how they deliver that message. Um, so this is down to the businessmen, Bob Aaron, uh, uh, Eddie Hearn, uh, to, to talk and try and get this done. So without, without going over it and over it, Johnny, if I could ask you for a prediction, when, where, TV channel? Well, uh, TV channel, I have no idea how that's going to work out. Where, depending on what kind of money they're, they're talking and... 
and uh, don't be surprised if it's somewhere like Saudi Arabia. It's got that kind of ridiculous money that is so genuine. Don't be surprised. I'm not saying that's what it is. Uh, when, um, if you're talking next fight, you're probably talking May time, uh, April, May time. Uh, so, so again, uh, it's a case of how Tyson Fury deals with uh, his court case with Deontay Wilder, how Anthony Joshua deals with his mandatory challenge from Alexander Usyk of the WBO, how the WBO, the governing bodies, will respond to this. Uh, they are two fighters for the first time that are bigger than the belts. So actually, they don't need the belts because uh, people will recognise will recognize them as the best in the world. So that then will, if the governing bodies are so stupid as to, to strip them, then it, again, it, it doesn't show them in a good light and discredits the belt. We spoke to Spencer Fearing yesterday about it, and he started talking mm. about resumes. That AJ's got yeah. a bit better resume than Fury, and it's caused yeah, quite yeah, a bit of debate. Yeah, of course he has. And, and people don't realise that. And, um, and no matter what you say or do, you look at his, re his resume, you look at who he's boxed, how many champion uh, world title challenges he's boxed, how many champions he's boxed. And it far outweighs uh, Tyson Fury. Yes, Tyson Fury's had two, two big wins against uh, Vladimir Klitschko and uh, John T. Wilder. Um, and that's it. So, 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 and, and, and the stars make fights. Um, a can beat B and B can beat A. Uh, and, and B can beat C and C can beat A. Um, and so, what you've got now is you've got, uh, uh, you've got to look at one or the other. So it should, you've got to think of how long Anthony Joshua's been boxing and the people he's boxed and beat. How long hasn't Fury been boxing? Uh, so you think what Anthony Joshua's done in such a short space of time, do you honestly think that he can't, he can't again, do the same thing again with, with Tyson Fury? I think it's going to be a tough fight. I really do. I don't doubt it. Um, uh, but I, I'm going to side with Anthony Joshua on this. Do, do you think the resumes will have any bearing on the fight, Johnny? No, uh, but uh, for individual confidence, I think it'll do Ramsey and Joshua world of good because they'll say, well, look at all the people I've been compared to all the people you've been. And that says it all. Um, but Tyson Fury is a good salesman, talks a good fight. So I'm still quite sure when it comes to, verb, to verbal sparring, he'll win. Uh, but AJ will do his talking in the ring that's what he's got to do I won't even try and challenge him when it comes to the verbal sparring yeah, probably why he's given Tyson's <laughs> Tyson's ability to do that uh, Johnny can we rattle through some new questions for you yeah uh, starting with this weekend Canelo Smith yeah good fight um, um, I've always said uh, Smith is not the finished article um, I've always said that uh, uh, so now for this one he needs a career vest uh, because anything less he'll get turned over and um, uh, Canelo's a good fighter Canelo is an improve every time I see him he, he impresses me he shows me something else new uh, faster than what I thought better boxer than what I thought time is better than what I thought everything's spot on I don't think it's an impossible task for Smith but I know he needs a career best performance and if he does he gets the win do you think the rehydration or lack of a rehydration clause will have any bearing on it? Because Smith's um, a bit, big, big yeah. fan at that. But. There is. <clears throat> he is, but he lives in the gym. So I, um, I understand what you're saying, uh, but I don't think Joe Gallagher would have agreed to something he knows that would affect his fire. He just wouldn't. Yeah. Joe protects his fighters way too much. And I'm into the point where, into the detriment where they'd actually lose out on fights because he's kind of overprotective. So I don't think, I don't think that's an issue at all. If Jody think it can be done, it won't be done. Uh, have you seen the news? Dillian and Pavetkin seems to be off or at least postponed. I expected that because if Pavetkin really had COVID, there was no way he's fighting the end of January yeah. because I've had it. Then I know if you've really had it, it's gonna it takes you a good few months to get it off your chest, get yourself back to fitness again. So so it's not it, some people have got worse cases than others. 
And if Povetkin ended up hospitalised for it, that means he had it in a bad, in a bad way. So I'm not surprised um, at all. Uh, but it will happen. But I think you're probably talking March time, if I'm honest. Eddie's mentioned a couple of replacements or possible replacements. Andy Ruiz, Ortiz, or even Wilder. Mm. Risky strategy. Is there any of those that you would avoid if you were advising great Dillian? Uh, great name. So for Dillian, you know, is that he'll fight anybody that they put in front of him. Uh, now, now he's in a position where that mandatory position uh, that he got himself into has gone because Povetkin's taken it until he writes that wrong. So while there, that won't happen. Um, Ruiz could happen. Um, uh, uh, Ortiz again, good fire. Um, so many of those, uh, but I, I wouldn't. I'd write Wilder off. I, I, Wilder, I just couldn't see happening. I know, even though Wilder said he wants to fight, now wants to fight. Um, Dylan White, um, there's a blueprint to beating him, and Wilder is chasing that big payday that he lets slip through his fingers with Tyson Fury. Wilder is in a position now where nobody is in a in the whole needs him club. He's too dangerous. He punches too hard. You know, it, and so unless he's got somebody to bargain with, I won't fight him. He ain't got nothing to brew rare. So 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 you know it's just a case of Wilder's ambitions and how long he's been able to be patient and he might have to pay for an opponent to and then pay for him and answer upon to, to get in the ring with him. Nobody has to fight him. And that's the thing, he's not in a, he's not put, fought himself in a position to fight somebody. So unless the, the coming in bodies make him mandatory challenger uh, or, 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 or a final eliminator between him and somebody else, it's a case of people develop amnesia, like he did with, with Dylan White. You know, all of a sudden he, he remembered now Dylan White. So we'll see. Lovely. And with some light-hearted ones, Johnny. Uh, did you meet Floyd at the weekend? Give him the thumbs up. Um, he was down in the cheap seats. Um, he was in the cheap seats, so I didn't want to mix riff raff with the riff raff. <laughs> but he was actually was just below us where the studio was. And when he came through with a bat, I saw a, a crowd from Tony just waving. I'm thinking, who's that? Until he got behind me. He thumbs up, oh, all right. oh, how are you doing, man? So he's all right, man, he's all right. Good for him. Nice, with nice touch for, for um, Joshua. Did Carl Froch go over and remind him of the 80,000 at Wembley again? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, Carl, Carl's done his job, as far as he's concerned. He's, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, Floyd had probably just remind him how much money he's made. So it doesn't matter how many people watch you. <laughs> Why don't you get a dollar off everybody that came in? Yep. He was in a feisty mood on Saturday, Carl, wasn't he? He had a dig at you about the suit as well. I know I did. I know I just liked to, I had to drop a minute with age. I said, you and age, you falling out? I know what. <laughs> um, put, my, put him under pressure. Um, he went, no, no, we're cool. I thought, no, you're not. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, I like Carl. You know what? He's one of my favourites. He's one of my favourites. Uh, to work with um, and it's uh, always a pleasure working with him because he's got a very dry sense of humour and people don't get him but you know what he's a, he's a funny guy he's a proper funny guy and he don't take himself as serious as what you think you know and yeah, yeah. people don't know but... um, I have to ask you Johnny because you made the comment after we last sport yeah Tennyson beating Javante Davis you yeah. took an awful lot of stick about, about that one mate <laughs> I don't mind <laughs> The devil's in the detail, and, uh, and let, see how we came out. Right, so I'm basically saying, Tennyson has world-class power, uh, and he hits Davies, he knocks him out. He has world-class power. Uh, we can we can we can fudge it and fill it with put meat on the bones everywhere else, but that's I, I stick to that. He's got world-class power. He hits Davies, he knocks him out. End of. So do you stand by it? Yeah, I do. Right. The, the, the problem is, and, and, and it does frustrate me a little bit, which I don't, and, uh, but then I think, well, it's not really my problem. We don't support our own. Uh, we're so quick to, to, to support fighters from overseas. Uh, and you can't look for how our fighters can do it. Yes, uh, you know, and, and, and it's about platform and about an opportunity. Um, and, and, and a lot of 
Davis is with Floyd Mayweather. Great platform, great opportunity. So we know about him. Everybody's like bought into him. Tennyson, um, um, he's now at a weight that he feels comfortable at and he's shown world class, pa class power, punching power at that weight. So explain to me why if he hits Davis, he couldn't knock him out. Uh, why, if, yeah, if, if, you to, if you couldn't knock him out, I don't understand what the issue is there. I don't understand what people are not understanding. You know, you're giving credit, you're giving props to a young man. I'm not saying he can outbox him. I'm not saying he's, he's, he's technically smarter than him. But what I'm saying is, if that boy hits Davis, he's knocking him out. And I will give credit where credit's due. So, so you've got a lot of armchair champions that tell, tell you that you don't know what you're talking about. Cool, no problem. I deem to be proved wrong. You know, remember when Anthony Joshua boxed Ruiz, literally five months after he got beat up by him, and everybody, well, a lot of people uh, started talking about the negatives. And I'm saying, are you mad? He goes back and mocks him, I'm betting we want 1,000%, it's never going to happen again. He'll beat him, hands down. People didn't get it. And so I don't mind the stick. I'm not, I'll say, any, I'll say the things that I can back up. I'm not saying it to wind people up. I say the things that I can back up. So the stick actually made me smile because the amount of Angelo Dundee's that locked up <laughs> saying uh, they, what, how much they know and what, she, and what they don't know. Uh, and the amount of haters that are out there, I actually don't mind it. You know, I, I actually don't mind at all. Lawrence O'Coley bought in and I should have bought the WBO title, but it obviously it didn't it fall through. Before, Lawrence O'Coley has got a lot of stick for his style not being attractive, even classes boring, uh, whatever. And I say, give this boy time. Give him time. I know the stick is going through. And Lawrence is strong enough to ignore the, the naysayers and the knockers. And then all of a sudden, he's like, oh my God, Lawrence O'Coley. Because he showed his punch power. He showed what he can do. Be patient. Be understanding. Unfortunately, human nature can be very fickle uh, and cruel at times. And so, so and then the problem is if sportsmen listen to people that have never done it before and let those people that have never done it before influence them, more fool them. Everybody's entitled to an opinion. But I'd like to see those opinions where someone gets in there and gets smashed on the nose and then start telling me what their opinion is because it's completely different. Last one in, well, I was going to say it's the last boxing question technically, but have you seen the Jake Paul video? Uh, and you know what? I've actually, as I, just before we did this, I saw a clip of something, but I didn't re see it all the way through. But what's he saying? Uh, he's basically called out Conor McGregor to a boxing match. He's called him an Irish, C-U-N-T, dissed his wife, offered him 50 million. You've got the likes of Liam Smith have told him exactly what they think of him. Uh, social media seems to be very much of the opinion. I've read comments such as, thanks Eddie Hearn, this is the monster you've created. Mm. Just, your, just your thoughts on that? Mm. Well, um, this is business. Um, and so, if I, this point, I don't know how disrespectful he's being to established fighters. Uh, and like it or not, it's going to attract a crowd. It's going to attract an audience. Because if you're talking like 50 million, that means, that means he knows at least 50 million people are going to watch, the, watch this thing. You know, people are going to watch it and pay the money. And the money's going to be available. So, he's writing checks his body can't cash. But he can write, he, but there's checks he can write and he knows people are going to watch it. He knows he's going to make money out of it. So he's probably willing to take the embarrassment, the beating, whatever, but they get paid a shed load of money. And that's why he's looking at it. He's just being smart. Floyd Mayweather's doing the same. Look at Floyd. Yeah. Floyd, Floyd like, he's saying, yeah, I'll do it. The, that, those kind of things. I do those things with like ex-rugby players in working men's club. You know, for charity, and you think, oh, this is, it's, it's like taking candy from a baby. So until the reality of getting in there with a seasoned professional fighter that knows his trade inside out. When you actually get in there, that's when real fear hits you because you know you're in shit deep and there's no way out. And that's what Jake will find out. Is it good for boxing though, Johnny, do you think in general? And I'm talking it's more about the talking. hardcore it's got, it's, got, it's got people talking about it. Yeah. Uh, is it boxing? Um, you've got some kid that can't fight. So, that's disrespectful. Can't fight as good as most. Um... Uh, being able to generate a, sh a shed load of money. 
good on him. Good for him. So, and, and listen to a lot of people that have, he's not, in, 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 in at this stage in his career, the main money he's making, he made, he's made more, more than most boxers. He's doing something right. Last one. If Johnny Nelson could have three fights, that would definitely happen in 2021. Which three would you make, Johnny? I ain't fighting 2021. No, I'm not you. In 20, I'm 54 in 2021. <laughs> so, so that's not happening. Trust me, it's not happening. <laughs> um, not, not you, Johnny. I would assume Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua would be one. Yeah, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. Um, uh, I'd like to see... Let's give him some props. I'd like to see uh, Joshua Bawatsi against... I'm talking local now. Joshua Bawatsi against Callum Johnson. I'd yeah. like to see that. Um, uh, uh, and I'd like to see Kid Galahad get his final crack for a world title. Get his crack for a world title. Again, he's right. put himself in position. Had to leave with an ingle fight there. That's how I roll. Good luck. <laughs> Johnny, we'll leave you alone on a little Christmas. So can I wish you all the very best? You too, you too, my friend. Have, have a wonderful one best to be with the family, and I really appreciate yeah. your time. I've been terrified you choked on a chip there. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, mate. Listen, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yes.